Hello guys, one of the most important thing in career of a web developer or any developer in my experience is working with a team. So the first step, the first jump from being a junior solo freelancer to working in a team is where the developer evolves the most because working in a team is a magic in itself. So it's not just coding, it's just coding up to a standard. So all the team members would be productive, happy, and the overall product would be released efficiently. And in this video, I have around 20 tips, five of them non-Laravel specific and all the others around Laravel and PHP. What can you do as a better team member? So what should you care about? What standards, what processes you should follow? So let's dive in. Some of these pieces of advice will come from you guys because I posted on Twitter a few days ago. Maybe you have some tips about X things to know when working in a team on Laravel project. And you had some advice and I will mention that in this video and I thank you for participation. Now let's dive into the first five tips about non-Laravel specific tasks. First thing you probably have seen that on the screen already, learn Git or learn any source control version control software, but Git is the most popular by far in the world. So learn how your team should use Git. If it doesn't use it, why? Be an ambassador to actually use it because managing the source code in a team without Git, it's a pain. And I have a few videos on Git on the main things, Git in Laravel two part series, or there's a lot of stuff online. If you Google learn Git, there are tutorials from Atlassian, which is the creator of Bitbucket, also Code Academy course, Git SCM, so a lot of stuff, both visual, video, and tutorials, so just Google. But apart from just learning Git as like syntax, so Git add, Git commit, and all of that, there are also two things you need to consider. So learn the tools to use Git effectively. So if you Google Git tools, there are tools to help to use Git more effectively visually. So graphical user interface clients or tools like, for example, source tree. I've been using that quite a while. Git Kraken, haven't tried it, but I've heard a lot of things good around that. Then there's GitHub desktop official, which I currently use on my MacBook. And there are a lot more. So basically it shows you the visual representation. So here it is in my checklist or project. So what were the commits, what were the files changed and stuff like that. So to avoid just terminal git something, you use some tools. Also your ID could help with that. Like PHP storm has some git functionalities. So use like layer number two around that. So layer number one is how to use git branches and how it all works. Layer number two is tool to use that effectively. And then there's layer number three, how Git process works on your team specifically. So you need to decide or find out the answers to the questions like how to commit, what branches to use, how to do pull request or merge, who does the merge, who tests the branches. Is there an auto deployment from some branch or not? What files to commit or not to commit to the repository? You need to follow the process of your team. And if your team member new to already existing team with their Git processes, please find out and please ask for some kind of documentation or just someone would explain to you how to use Git or GitHub or Bitbucket or whatever is the system for your team specifically. Next thing is to write installation instructions or readme files for whatever you do, if that's important for others. So I've recently made a review of one repository which has a readme and here's an example of installation instruction. It may be better in some ways, but it's something. So for a new developer on your team, or it may be yourself in the future on a new computer or a new server, please provide installation instructions. And if there are some tools needed, some ENV variables, anything related like external services or external packages dependencies, for example, if you are working with image manipulations, there should be something on the server installed for that, like image magic or something. So just general tip number two, write readmes or installation instructions in form of wiki or Google Docs or whatever. Or if your installation is pretty specific, you can avoid long installation instruction with providing Docker image. So I found an example of open source invoice ninja project and one of the installation options is Docker file. 
So it's just a link. And with the help of that, a new developer or yourself in the future again can configure your environment really quickly by just using Docker image. Next tip is pretty controversial and opinionated. And I have a separate video on that as a part of my checklist or course and series is don't write too many comments in the code because the comments, especially automatically generated, they take too much space and don't really mean much sometimes. Of course, sometimes they help for automation tools like generating some documentation or API for something. But generally comments in the code mean like if you need to explain what the code does in the comment, that means that the code itself is not readable enough in most cases. So if you have some kind of variable and you need to write a comment line above explaining what that variable does or what that feature does, it's very likely you can improve the code itself by renaming the method, the parameters, structuring the method itself with if else early returns and stuff like that. So use comment as kind of last resort if you really need to explain something why the code was written in a certain way. So text comments is mostly not about what the code does, but why it does it in a certain way. Next tip is coding styles and coding guidelines. Probably the most often problem that I see on the team when a new developer joins the team and they write code in a slightly different way. So things like code indentation, naming things, how to structure everything in the PHP file, for example. There are rules and guidelines for that. So a few people mentioned that another comment is from Philip who mentions PHP CS Fixer and PHP CS Fixer is a coding standards fixes. So coding standards like PSR 1, 2 and 12 advise you or require you to write code in a certain way and by running tools like PHP CS Fixer, whether it's locally or on your server, you would ought to fix the code according to those standards. But a better way is to agree on the standard with the team before the code is pushed to the server or wherever. So all the team members should follow, should agree to follow, for example, PSR 12. And I have a separate video about how to name various things. And also I mentioned PSR standards there. So I will link that in the description below as well. But basically all the team should follow one standards for writing code. That may or may not mean that everyone should use the same IDE like PHP Storm or VS Code for all the team with similar plugins or extensions. That's not necessarily, but it would help to stay within the same style often. And final tip is still not about Laravel, but as an example of backups, basically my tip is write code and structure the code in a way that at any time your computer may break or your live server may break, may shut down, may crash, may catch fire, God forbid, but whatever happens and you don't have the latest code base. So you need to take care of the plan B, which includes backup of files, which is repository. We talked about that in the previous tips, then backup of the databases and not only live database, but maybe testing database is important as well. Staging database, the latest version. So take care of auto backups, which should not be stored on the same server. It should be somewhere else on S3, Dropbox or whatever you prefer. Then the repository should contain some seeds. We will talk about that in the next video for Laravel tips. But basically you need to just install the project and be prepared like fresh project. If you don't have any database backup from the repository, you should be able to install and just start or continue working without entering the data manually again. And also things like assets, like uploading files to somewhere else. If your project contains some image upload or file upload, those uploads should not be stored on the same server or the same computer. You should use again, external services like Amazon S3 or Dropbox or whatever. So in other words, do not have one point of failure and be prepared that at any time, any computer may crash because they do. Quite recently, when I was changing my MacBook from the old one to the new one, I was so pleased that I opened my MacBook, installed Laravel Valet as a server really quickly, pull all the code that I need from the repositories I need, and I get working. 
So there's no big deal in changing the computer, basically. That's the way how you should structure your code, your project, and your assets. So that's it for this video. I thought it would be one long video with the tips, but already talking for quite a while, I'm trying to keep the videos short on this channel. So there will be a part two with Laravel and PHP specific tips, which is coming in a few days on this channel. So subscribe to the channel, hit the bell button to be notified when new videos are published and support the channel by checking out one of the three products from my team and myself that you can see on the screen and see you guys in other videos.